In this video, I will be going over how to create your very own 3D raycasting game in Scratch. But before I begin, I will show you a brief overview of the of the functions. You can skip ahead. Um, you can skip ahead a couple minutes. But anyway, let's first give you an introduction to the to the um, trigonometric functions and the other functions that we may be using during our session. So first we have first we have the um, sine function, which sort of does these literal rolling waves. So it's sort of um, I mean this system. Actually, let me just switch this system to degrees because that's what Scratch uses. But anyway. So this is, so it's sort of, so let's see, in radians, you know, how about I do in radians? So in radians, this sort of is much, uh, has a much shorter period, whereas in degrees, um, it stretches out to 360. Um, so this is what sine looks like. Here is what cosine looks like. They also are between one and negative one in terms of pi. And then tangent, which is, um, which sort of makes these uh, lines that go upwards from down. And then we have arc sine, which we won't be using today. And arc cosine, which we also won't be using today. These are pretty much the inverse of the cosine and sine functions. Then we have arc tangent, which is which sort of does this and stretches out indefinitely, unlike the other um, inverse trigonometric functions. And we have the absolute value function, which sets the which um, which keeps the x above the x-axis, which means that it must be positive. It converts negative any negative numbers to positive numbers, which is pretty much what this does. In Scratch, it's labeled abs. And then here, this is like arc sine, a sine, arc cosine, a cosine, and arc a tangent. So let's see. And then we have floor, which sort of rounds it downwards um, under the um, the x the uh, line y equals x. It's um, point of one equals zero is actually up here not down there. And then we have ceiling of x, which sort of does this like a little staircase. Um, and then that's the, and then that's all the functions that we're gonna be using. So let's get right into it. Let's create a new project. So first we will want to, uh, well first we will want to uh, start a new project like this. And then we will want to add the pen extension by clicking this little thing over here and then clicking pen. Um, in the old scra version of Scratch, um, pen was already, it already comes in its own section here, but since Scratch 3.0, it's sort of the thing you have to add now. Um, okay, and then let's title our to Raycaster Jet Test. And then we are okay, we are here so let's then create some variables x or player x and player y these are sort of where the, the position of the player is relative to the to the entire map we could also add player z if we wanted but let's leave that for another time so let's set our player X and player Y to 2.5 and 2.5. That sort of tells us where we are on the map. Um, then let's do camera cross camera like this. And then let's set it to zero. Then let's initialize a forever loop and then a more block. And with the more blocks, you must have this little box checked. 
run without screen refresh because otherwise it's going to reload and reload and the process is going to draw it very slowly. With run without screen refresh, it's just going to do it in a flash. Um, but I mean, the pen sort of slows, pen, the way the pen works on Scratch is a little slow compared to Cairo or like they do in C++. Um, so we use that. And then let's add block name. And then we add a repeat loop. Well, let's say we add, let's say the resolution, let's also set another variable called resolution right here. Set resolution to Let's set resolution to, let's say 120. And then let's repeat for the resolution. And let's also set another variable called i, and this time let's keep this private like this. Set i to negative half of the resolution, which we can pretty much do by resolution divided by negative two. And we change i for every time this goes through the loop. And then, so let's also set our x to negative 240. And then we change x by the re by 480 over over the resolution so let's um, all right so here we go so now it's sort of so now the point sort of go starts from negative 240 and go makes its way across this little axis and to make sure also to confirm t for safety measures I include what set y to zero so that's so that's there so now we have the little loop now we will want to create another block called um, called uh, face x, <coughs> which sort of um, <coughs> which sort of repeats and are there one more thing we need to add an input number called slope. And the slope is pretty much where the point in your projection is. For example, let's say my hat is a camera. It's sort of a, the slope can be one, 0 0.5, 0, negative 0 0.5 or negative one. So this is what this, what this slope variable is. So now let's set our parameter to i times two over resolution. And this sort of makes our field of view maximum of one. So it's sort of see what this maximum slope of one. So now this variable becomes this. The next thing we do is the is setting sort of making the setting more variables let's create a new variable called face x and this sort of where this sort of marks where the the x the uh, face x distance is um, and since we want ascend we want it to be ascending we are we want to create since it's ascending, we want to do the floor of the player X. So that way, it sort of goes to the one in front of you, and it doesn't continue repeating, and it just stops at the correct position. 
so we can do proper distance calculations. So we set it to the floor of player x. And then let's create a repeat until. Let's create a new variable called done. And here we set done to zero and we repeat until done is equal to one. And then let's also create a new variable called face y. And let's set that to let's set that to uh, the tangent. Okay, so here's where the gets a little bit uh, uh, complicated. So here we have the player x. So for so we subtract the face x from the player x like this, and then we add the player y at the end. <coughs> so it is pretty much we pretty much add the tangent of the arctangent like um, where is it arctangent like this and then here and then between the tangent and the arctangent we have an addition operator and then here's where we put in the slope which we got from this variable over here. <coughs> and then we add the camera variable, which is sort of describes the rotation of the camera. So we add it like this. And we set face y to, to this value. And this is how face x is sort of important, although it's pretty much only used once. <coughs> So we add, and then here, so that we don't have an infinite loop, we set done. We always set done to one. And then, <coughs> and then we also, and then the next step in this process uh, is to create a map like this. Let's say map. For all uh, starter, let's say starter map because we might because you might want to change the map at some point in the in the game. So let's create it, and here we can create a map. So we so in my system I use zeros and ones mostly. Zeros represents air, and one represents occupied by a material. So let's say um, let's say like this. And and two point five two comma two point five should be here. So this is where sort of where be where the player starts. Um, let's let's just make our map. Oh god, it, the whole thing deleted. And then let's close the map like this. So this is sort of what the map looks like. And so we do so then the map. Okay, so this is what the map looks like now. It's sort of like a long elongated rectangle with a little square um, off right off the middle. Like this, we can use face x and face y and obtain whichever value this belongs to. So we do if, we use if statements. If this was Java or C++, JavaScript, maybe using switch statements if you want to do multiple, but in this case, uh, since it's scratch, they don't have switch statements, so we're just going to use these. So if we do, this starter if 
um, if the occupied block is equal to one, which is pretty much item of, let's see, the letter. So the letter sort of represents the X, and then the one, and then the other one represents the Y. So 2.3, so Y 4.5 comma 2.5 will be here, or the 2.5 comma 4.5. It's a little easier, it makes it a little easier to read. So, but if you, but it doesn't matter too much. So let's take the floor of, so let's take the floor of, let's take the floor of base X. This was the letter, and then the number of the array is going to be the floor of face Y. And in the future, we might <coughs> we'll do some addition and subtraction with those. So this sort this just obtains the letter, and then we do. And since this is the text if it's occupied, we set done to. Actually, we do if it's vacant. If it's occupied, we'll do something else. But we say that if it's vacant, then we add the then we add then we set done to zero which repeats the whole loop else it'll just terminate and then if it's off the map scratch just returns <coughs> scratch just returns uh, scratch will just return a blank value like let's say no letter okay letter 41 is apple this just returns a blank <coughs> string so now we have now we've set it's done to zero here the last step in this process is to is uh, to set the distance so in this case we set distance one and we do this because these, this thing, uh, this function doesn't have return value because more blocks in Scratch don't have return values, so this is pretty much our return value, distance one. And here's where we use the Pythagorean theorem, which, um, which is pretty much uh, the way you get circles. Um, Pythagorean co theorem goes like this. Um, Let's see, a squared, uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Um, but in this case, x plus x squared plus y squared is equal to d squared. So let's say, let's say x uh, y y squared <coughs> y squared is equal to one is equal to one squared. I mean, one squared is equal to one anyway, but like this, two, three, four, this sort of gets the circle. And like this, we can get the distance by use, pretty much using the Pythagorean theorem. So, so if we root the whole thing, we get the distance. So like this, we do square root of Face x times face x, and then face y times face y, and we add the two values together. And this is pretty much the Pythagorean theorem. To straighten the uh, the straighten to corners, we do times the cosine of the slope of cosine of the arctangent of the slope like this <coughs> and this sort of returns a little z value in, involved with it so there we go and now we set like this we set the y value to 10 over Let's say, let's say, um, 
30 over the distance. Say 30 over dist 1, and then we set it to negative, negative 30. And this sort of renders each strip accordingly. We do pen down and pen up. We also want to set the pen size to maybe 3 or 4 here. Alright, um, and then we want to add a basic, at least the most basic of controls, which is W. We do, <coughs> we do repeat until not, or repeat until not W is pressed. That sort of ends when you, when you take the W off, or take your finger off W. Then we add we change x, player x, and player y, <coughs> and let's do times 0 0.02, 0 0.05, I mean we want at least some level speed, times the cosine, and then the cosine and the cosine of the camera and then here we would want to set the let's see repeat resolution oh wait actually this is not where I want it this I actually want it oh wait yeah, it actually is never mind so we put this here and we set the camera to let's say 10 times let's say 10 times or three times the mouse x like this um another step that we that i almost forgot is that we should clear for every time we <coughs> excuse me initialize this Okay, so now we sort of got, um, alright, so, so now we sort of got a raycaster, let me see, um, oh, one more thing I almost forgot, to make sure that the Pythagorean theorem is correct, we subtract, we do subtraction, Face X, face X, face Y, face Y, player X, player X, player Y, player Y. So now the faces are rendering, except, let's say, except that the movement is a bit skewed, skewed like this. So to fix that, there's uh, there's multiple ways, but the primary thing to do is switch these around like this, and then you sort of you can sort of move around a bit more naturally. And currently, and the current issue is that we have two sides. This sort of repeats what's seen behind us. To fix that, the only thing we need to do is um, is convert this to ceiling whenever it happens, and convert this to negative one whenever it happens. To do that, we do if, and we copy this entire thing, plus add add ninety. and then mod like this 360 is less than 180 
this sort of detects if it's with if it's outside of the if it's within the specified range. If not, it just come it just makes the tangent go out the other way. The tangent line. So we add then we duplicate this entire thing. We set the ceiling to that and then we change the face x like this and now and now if we return backwards now it renders each face properly like this the other issue currently is that this face is not acting very much like a cube there is on um, the way to fix this is to um, I think add or subtract I think add Hmm. I think subtract. Um, I think yeah. I think subtract. So face y, face x. We subtracted from the face x, and here it doesn't matter if it's within the floor or out of the side of the floor. And this sub minus one because either way it'll be the same because the way because of the way floor works and check if it's so if you the way you can know if you check that if the face is rendered right there if not then you're good okay here it's invisible and then here it's visible again so now here is the little the little face um and if you want you could also increase the Um, you can also increase like the thing like this to make you appear a little more small. And uh, I mean, we will be using making you feel like small by decreasing the distance whenever we will. But anyway, for now, we have we at least have the x faces, and then to get the y faces, it'll be a different story. We add a new another one called face face y run without screen refresh add slope and then like this we have the face y and more block in this one there's a couple changes that we will make so first we need to move these like this and then we create a new variable called dist2 which is the second distance because we'll be comparing the two values set distance2 to, to this value then here is where it gets a little where it gets a little complicated we start switching we first we switch these two values like this and then we have okay then and then we we make this we remove this and make sure it's 180 if not we can just swap these 180 and this little value but we'll do some testing for that so done to zero and then we instead of player x floor player x we set this to floor of player y and then face x, face y. Um, here's the camera. Here is where we want to subtract 90 from the camera because we're rotating the whole thing. And then here we sort of swap it like this. Actually, yeah, let's swap it like this. So now face y and we pretty much want to swap every face y and face a player out of y and player x area. <coughs> player x let's see player y player y and player x player x. So that's it for this one. Moving on to the second one, we uh, we set it to player y and then the next one set done to one, and then we do this 
face Y. Okay, face X done. Okay. Oh, also, um, you can also include this outside of the if else block. Um, like this, and that way you don't need to do do that way it'll be less repetitive. Okay, then this one can go set this to distance two. This thing can go, and I think that I think that looks about it. About it. All right. The next thing we need to do is calculate face y with the same with the same slope values and then we compare the values see I actually this shouldn't be an if else but yeah actually this should be an if else and then we have this If distance one is less than distance two, we set the main distance variable, which is going to be this. Okay, if then we set that to distance one. Otherwise, we will set it to distance two. That means that if if distance two is closer, like this. And we have little variables, and then here is where we swap these distance, distance. Okay, now we have the calculation. Now here it's a bit, the calculation for the y is a bit wonky right now. So let's, uh, let's investigate. So we have this, actually let's see, hmm, I guess this, this air, this space, these spaces are, oh shoot, actually, let's see, I think we had, <coughs> we had 90s the whole thing. If not, then we'll see again. Yeah, I think it's, uh... Let's see, so it's actually... Okay, so now I think I've kind of <coughs> done something. So, let's see, so we need proper relativity for the values. Let's say 180 here. Hmm. Alright, so, well, yeah, so I'll just play around with this and then see. I think, <coughs> I think here we do this. Oh wait, here we, oh I forgot, We this needs to be minus 90 as well. So now it's, now things are running a bit more properly. Uh, oh, yep, and now we have actually, I actually did it. Wait, where's the random rendering coming from?
Okay, so one side is proper, the other side is rendering the wrong way. Player Y, face X, okay, swap these as well. I almost forgot about these variables, I okay, thank God. And then now, We have, okay, so now we, oh right, um, we do this, lower y, now we have, now we have a rate caster, so this is what, <coughs> so now we have this little rate caster, so you can sort of play around, extend the map, um, and yeah. <coughs> so now that we have our little raycaster system, we'll, um, <coughs> we'll, uh, do some a bit of experimenting, but first let's set the background. And setting the background is actually, <coughs> is not a difficult, it's not, it's not really a difficult task. Let's convert Q to bitmap like this. And then let's have let's set the let's set this to half. It sort of gives this little light effect. Actually let me in fact let me Alright. All right, let's let's do this again. <coughs> so let's add a little light effect like this. And it'll be like dark. Make this game dark and creepy. We flip it vertically. Extend it just a little bit. Oh wait, why am I in vector graphics? That's not what I want. <coughs> oh no. Um, so now we have this little light effect. <coughs> Our next step is to... So our next step is to add a little <coughs> light effect. So let's set our color. Here we we set our color to Oh okay, yeah, let's let's maybe let's make the walls a bit less saturated. And then we change the pen brightness by <coughs> negative distance. And we could even multiply this to 10. Like this, and now we have a little light effect, or light effect. And we could even amplify the effect for better results. And in the backdrop, and in the background, Wait, let's, let me just, um, sorry, here we go. So in the background, we can sort of stretch this, except it's not letting me. There we go. Now it's a bit more stretched. And then let's say we have <coughs> this part and this part. Let's sort of even. Let's sort of evenly separate them like this. And then let's fill this with void. So that way it's a bit more difficult for 
Oh, what did I do? It's a bit more difficult to contrast whether a wall is there or not. And then we can also have, hmm, we can also reduce the speed of the player to 0 0.01. So now we're moving much slower, and we could, and in the future we could add footsteps. For now, we have this little raycaster. And, okay, so the next step is to add textures. For that, we use a variable called paint mode. P paint modes. Paint one, let's say paint one, and paint two. And this sort of compare, and then we compare the distances, and we get paint. <coughs> Face Y, we set, first we set paint 1 to, so here we sort of, uh, so here we sort of um, use if statements. Um, let's say here, let's say here we'd want to, okay, can you just cooperate please? Okay, so like this, we have, we have, we're sort of applying it to one, fa one face, so paint mode 2 to 0, and then if not, set it to 1. mod 0 0.01 alright like this actually you know what point zero hole or 0 0.1 is less than 0 0.05 and let's have that be face y always <coughs> So now, all right. So now let's also set the paint modes. Let's set paint to paint one, and then here set paint to so paint to paint two. And then we also, and then here we'll use an if statement. We'll use a series of if statements. Like this. If paint is equal to 1. And then we can also apply if paint is equal to zero, like this, we can also set it to a more saturated color, and we could even decrease the brightness if we wanted to. Okay, it looks like it's blinking a bit. just uh aha here it is so now we have a little effect on this wall nor this one it's just blinking because we haven't set the proper paint mode and that's sort of how you add the x textures
So for that, we add, we go to, if we want to change the textures up a bit, we can sort of, we can sort of stop midway. Let's say negative, let's say positive 15. And then let's also do the same here. Positive 15. And then there, we can switch colors. Or maybe let's actually do 10 to 0. So here we switch to... A bright... Let's switch... This is like the standard, 2636. Let's say, let's add a little bit more hue as well. Like this. And let's also change the brightness this and then let's also do the same here so this back to two six thirty six And now it sort of renders like these castle, these castle things. And now it's, so now it's textured. And if we wanted to, we could even, let's, we can even increase the brightness. let's say 70 for all this and 70 and if you want you can sort of play around with this alright so now it's a bit more bright so that means we should probably triple the darkness effect now things sort of just render if only if they get close and it sort of makes it a bit more of a creepy effect creepier effect anyway we can continue duplicating this Just that scratch is a bit wonky when it comes to this kind of copy pasting. Um, no, well how about we reduce to 0 0.02 and 0 0.01 because we can we can always play with these values. There we go, like this. Except that if it's this fine, it kind of, it's kind of uh, a little weird rendering wise because there's no anti-aliasing. But yeah, I mean for now this is, I think this is good texture wise. Alright, so let's see. So, 
So now if we sort of look, it sort of ends a bit weirdly, but for now it's not that big of a problem. The way it ends just like right there. So you can sort of test the creepiness out. And you could, and yeah, eventually I'll, I'll teach you how to add entities. But yeah, this is all, this is how, but yeah, I think this is all for now. Anyway guys, if you like this tutorial, leave a like down below, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys.